Hey guys, this is Brian with Ball Guy Side. Welcome back to another tutorial of our remote teaching tools that'll just help you rock this this coming fall and beyond. So we've actually gone through a couple others. If this is your first time here, you might want to check out that playlist right there. But this one is on GimKit, so let's jump into the video. Okay, so if you're just looking for 60 seconds on what GimKit is, you can check out this video right here very quickly about what GimKit is and what it does. But I'm assuming you've either already watched it or you know, or you're willing to stick around and find out. But GimKit is essentially a gamified experience to help kids review terms um, that you might have in your class. It doesn't matter what you teach, vocabulary is gonna be a really important thing. So as that comes up, here's the dealio. Um, this was created by a high school student and what kids do is they answer questions as they go along and uh, those questions are in them money. If you get a question wrong, you lose money. And the goal is to get to a certain dollar amount that you might set. Now, they can do this individually. They can do it in groups. They can do it as a whole class. But when they earn money, they buy power-ups to either earn money faster, sabotage their friends, or even to play against you as the teacher. It's pretty fun. There's three things I'm going to highlight here. Uh, first is how you might use this in a classroom. So I use it as a homework assignment for kids to do on their own, particularly when I'm remote teaching. So you don't have to use this as a homework assignment. You could use it in class if you've got kids with you all the, all the time. You could use it to help them establish study skills. So maybe you're coaching them on that. But once that's done, students would generate data from their time using the platform. And so as you go in and take a look at the powerful data, as they talk about here on their website on the back end, it allows you to see a couple things. It allows you to see how long a particular student spent on that uh, kit. It shows you how many times they got a particular word wrong or right how your classes are doing compared to one another if you wanted to engage in what's called seasons. But then um, the other thing you're, you're going to have here is what's called Kit Collab. So Kit Collab is where students collaboratively build the kit themselves. Now this is something awesome for the beginning of the school year. So maybe you have the kids introduce themselves with Flipgrid. Now, if you don't know anything about Flipgrid, there's a video right there. It's also a video that I've done in this series. But if you have the kids introduce themselves with Flipgrid, maybe they use a Kit Collab out of that same content and create a two truths and a lie. So something from the video, uh, two things from the video, and maybe one thing that's not in the video and maybe isn't true. And then the kids build that kid collab and then they play to get used to one another, get to know one another. So uh, I do this one with the kids every year and I'll show you that one in just a second. One thing I love about GimKit is it is constantly being updated. Now, sometimes features go away and come back, but they're creating a dynamic experience for students. That's one of the, the pluses for this thing that I absolutely love. But you can close that out. You can always get it back on the left-hand side with news. But you can see kits. These are all of the kits that I've created. So I'm going to go down to one of the kit collabs that I showed you. So kit reduce yourself is what I called it. And then in each one, they have three. It's actually three truths and a lie. And so you can find I'm down here as well. Find the lie. Uh, you know, my favorite vacation spot is the beach. I, I don't really like the beach except for the video I did about beach ecology, which I'll put up there. But um, I've eaten alligator. Jimmy Fallon has uh, used one of my tweets on a show. That was pretty awesome. Gotta love it. <laughs> this one's from Ed B. Zivotech. That's a cool last name. So uh, this is a great tool. Like I said, if kids create the kid collab and they did it through Flip. Flipgrid, um, it's a great way maybe for them to double check and, and get their understanding. But here's how it would normally work. So this is an ecology one that I did. Uh, so these are the terms. And I can show the answers over here to the right if I want to. Uh, I can play. So when you click play in GimKit, you have all these settings. Like do you want to play classic or on teams where they can get together? Do you want to set it up according to time or race for a certain dollar amount? That's probably my favorite. Uh, or everybody in. And so uh, depending on how long you want to spend, time might work. Like, hey, guys, we're going to do 10 minutes, and then um, you're on your own, right? So you can do it as a, you can set up classes, and those classes have the students' names in your class periods, and so they sign it as themselves. Now, this does not tie to an account, which is really important with the, the privacy laws coming around now. The kids just... You set up your class with the kids' names, and they just say, oh, yeah, that one's me from a drop-down. 
And you can give them starting cash if you want. I don't. You can change how much they, it gets taken off when they get something wrong, whether they can check their answers, all the stuff. Um, I find clapping to be a little annoying, so I always turn that off. The music's kind of cool. Uh, kid comes in late, they can always join. Uh, Power-ups are the things that the kids buy to actually get to the final goal faster. You can turn that off if you just want to see how well they know stuff. Clean power-ups means they can't sabotage their, their teammates. They can only do things that help themselves. This is a great side point here. I've turned this on a lot of times, and I'll talk to the kids about the winners who, who, the kids who win every round are never spending money sabotaging others. It's a great life lesson about character and that winners spend more time creating, doing, or achieving than worrying about uh, taking other people down a notch. It's almost always the kids in the last place that are trying to sabotage the winners. And it's really revealing about your attitude and view on the world. So anyway, um, that's it for what happens when you click play. Uh, you can export it a bunch of different ways, share it out, edit, or look at reports. So I'm going to show you some reports on the back end. When I'm looking at it like this, it shows me the percentage right. So kids were doing really well with this set here, 94%, 89%. But there's another way that I can dial in and get better reports than this. So when I click in, I get every student. And every student, it's going to give me their percentage right. If you wanted to use it for a grade, you don't have to. But I can look at a general overview, and it's going to give me how much money everybody you know, made, how many questions they answered, how many were incorrect. I can look at each individual question. Maybe this is the thing that's most valuable to me. So I can look, hey, kids are doing great, except, okay, species, maybe we need to clarify the language of that question. So I'm going to look at my assignments. I'm going to go down to body systems review. This is quite a while ago. And you can see that this was, a, I could share it out to, I could share this link out to Google Classroom or whatever LMS I'm in. But if I click on eighth period, I can look at every kid. All right. I can look at who completed it <laughs> two times, uh, who has not even started it. So this was on remote teaching and we weren't required to have kids there. That's why so many of them aren't there. But if I scroll down and I take a look at um, this particular student and I click at the report, then I can see 106 correct, 5 incorrect, 95% accuracy, how many times they got it right versus wrong, and then all the questions that this student didn't get wrong at all. So it really helps me to see uh, who's mastering the content and who's now, not. If I take a look at this student right here, then what that allows me to do is to see um, what questions are they struggling with? Which ones are they constantly getting wrong? So the kids come back into my class on a day when maybe they've been uh, remote learning and now they're in there face to face and I can go over and I can counsel each one of those students, reteach that content right there face to face uh, from six feet away, of course. But uh, so um, if you're remote teaching, this is an invaluable tool that allows you to give kids something to do remotely that helps them learn content, develop vocabulary and connect with what's going on. But it also is going to allow you feedback on how to better serve those students when they're back in your class. The last one that I'll talk about is Kid Collab. And Kid Collab allows you to collaboratively generate a kit from the students. So if you gave the kids an article to read or a video to watch and you asked them to document the vocabulary that they didn't know, that they struggled with, or maybe they're unclear about, you can have them take those words and generate a kit collab. So basically what's going to happen is I'm going to name the kit. I'm going to call this test kit collab one. It's in English science. I hit next. And then I'm going to choose an image. So what happens next is I just set up the other things. Uh, so once students follow this direction at the top and put this code in, then they can actually begin adding questions. Okay, so I'll show you what that looks like. Okay, so maybe they read an article and the article was on uh, ecology. So define... Okay, so that's it. They could submit another question. They can move on. They can wait for everybody or just get going, okay? So um, that's how Kit Collab is going to work. could be used in a lot of different ways. But again, I like to use this in the beginning of the school year to generate information from the kids, maybe after a homework assignment. Um, but I, I'll use this as an assignment and a class review. So this tool is actually pretty amazing at all that it can do. 
and all the different ways you can use it. So again, you can use it to uh, assign work to a class. You can do class review. You can do remote study sessions. You can generate information from your students and you can get really powerful feedback from your students. So again, this is GimKit. It's an awesome, awesome remote teaching tool, just an amazing ed tech tool, and I hope that was helpful.